We're back here at the Florida Regional Championships for the elite first match of the Elite Four. I am so excited to see these players play. Uh, Ian McLaughlin versus Ashton Cox. Yeah, I'm excited for the Elite Four. We actually have almost a repeat of the 2015 regionals we had down here, and three of the players, Ian's the exception here, they're actually coming back to that top four role. We also, the next match coming up, we do have a rematch essentially from nearly two years ago now with Wolf versus Will, but we are going to get into Ashton versus Ian to begin with. It should be an exciting match. We saw Ashton this morning and yesterday. We know his team is exciting. We know there's some weird and wonderful. And we saw Ian play something a little more standard, but play it very, very well. So I'm actually so excited to see how their sort of techniques line up. Ian just playing safe and solid, and Ashton just playing weird and wonderful. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about this earlier. I believe Ashton does still have a couple of tricks up his sleeve, so we'll have to see if maybe he spent some time last night studying his other top eight opponents and trying to figure out, you know, how to best use those tricks to throw his opponents off guard. Yeah, we definitely saw some good tricks, and I, the one thing I sort of felt Ian went for in his game was he used the Xerneas a lot. He relied on the Geomancy setup to really push on and win the game with Xerneas. And we saw in Ashton's game, he nullified a Xerneas really, really nicely with Haze. So I wonder if that's going to change how Ian has to play that game, because that technique that won him his two games in his best two out of three against Geo isn't going to work against Ashton, potentially. So he's got to have a backup plan. If he doesn't have a backup plan, and he's not prepared as well for some of the weird things that Ashton has, some of those slightly different picks that I know people at home love to watch. I know you guys love seeing such trendy Kangaskhans on the field. I know it's fun for you guys to watch, but it's not so fun if Ian has to figure out how to play around it. Yeah, and I mean, looking at his Ian's Looking at Ian's team, I think he certainly does have the tools he needs to come up on top against Ashton. The big question, though, is will he be able to, uh, you know, put them together in time to figure this out? Uh, there is a lot riding on this match for those of you back at home. Uh, the winner of this match is guaranteed $250 with the potential to earn $500 if they take the title. Plus, you know, bragging rights for making it to the final round of the Florida Regional Championship. A little bit of more championship points and just... You know, just knowing that you went into this weekend and really did the best that you can do. Yeah, we've also brought back the bricks as trophies. So we have. a nice little wall decoration for these players. We have kicked ourselves over to Team Preview, though. And even though we've seen them before, we're just going to have a little rundown of the teams again, including your favorite coming from Ian's side again. All right. So we're going to have Ian up on the top screen for this game. Uh, Xerneas, Smeargle, Whimsicott, Groudon, Kangaskhan, and Gengar versus Ashton's Kangaskhan, Groudon, Kyogre, Gardevoir, Crobat, and Gyarados. It's certainly going to be a fun matchup here. I'm really excited to see what these trainers decided to bring with them going into this first game. Yeah, we see as well Ashton actually taking a little moment to check some stats. So maybe looking at the speed statistic on his Pokemon, knowing the kind of common speed statistics that Ian's team may have, and what would be the best thing to bring? He does lead with Crobat Gardevoir that we saw in his top eight match, and he's going to be facing down the Xerneas Smeggle, so both players sticking with their favorite lead from the top eight match here. And I wonder if Ashton's team, this pairing, has the same answer that, you know, Ian face down in his top eight match. We'll have to see. I I really love though how both these trainers have started out this game with what they know and potentially what they are most comfortable with. Um, we certainly saw Ian, you know, despite uh, seemingly put in a bad position every single game in his top eight match with losing that smear goal so early on, he was able to capitalize on it and still get exactly what he wanted out of that match. Yeah, I, I really like hope he's planning that for this game as well. Yeah, I feel like Smeagol's going to be able to do a lot more this match as well. I feel there's not as much pressure coming down from Ashton's side of the field. There is, of course, maybe the Super Fang and a big attack from Gardevoir. But I just feel like it's not as in trouble as it was in his previous match. So I'd be interested to see. There's no safeguard, which is a big thing for him. So it may be able to actually just throw out those Dark Voids, which we know it loves doing. Yes, we're going to see Xerneas switch out. Kangaskhan coming in and it's place Gardevoir taking this opportunity to Mega Evolve and protect while Chromat sets up Tailwind. So if Smeargle did decide to go for a Dark Void here, this could be an attempt to ensure that at least one Pokemon, excuse me, on the field is faster than that Smeargle going into the next turn. Gardevoir protecting itself through that Dark Void. Uh, Corbat will fall asleep, but it looks like it's holding either a Lumberry or a Chestoberry. It is a Lumberry, so Corbat will wake up immediately, but Smeargle getting that evasiveness boost, turn one. That is probably not what Ashton wanted to see there from that Moody. No, that's a really tough draw for him to get on the Moody boost. Evasiveness is going to mean it's really hard to knock it out. Even though he has Tailwind up, 
you know, you think he's managed to go through that first turn without getting put to sleep because of the berry, but there's no more berries. Ian very wisely brings in that Kangaskhan, so we can pressure the Gardevoir that protected last turn with the Fake Out. He knows it's going to be able to Fake It Out, knows it's obviously not carrying a berry, so it is likely going to be able to put to sleep. Even if it does move first, it's going to have a rough old time getting that down, but we do see Ashton not letting that happen. No, Ashton blocks that faked out with a quick guard. Hyper Voice from Gardevoir barely missing the knockout on Swergle, though we see a second Dark Void. The big question here is, did both Pokemon fall asleep? We see the Crobat fall asleep this turn, and the Gardevoir falls asleep as well. Yeah, the second time of asking, Ian gets that really successful Dark Void off. It, lucky as well, Ashton did actually manage to hit the Smeagol through the evasiveness boost from Moody, and doesn't do it quite enough damage, it just needed a little bit more. Falling short, not enough. We know it doesn't hold the focus sash, so just needed a tiny bit more and a really good turn for Ian. I know that obviously he didn't get the fake out down, but he forced Crobat into using the quick card. Just the threat of the fake out means you know exactly what Crobat's gonna do and you can play accordingly. Crobat will remain asleep this turn. Uh, Gardevoir as well, so it's up to Kangaskhan and potentially Smeargle to deal some damage. Double edge from that Kangaskhan connecting with the Gardevoir. It does a massive amount, but it's just barely not enough to pick up that knockout, taking a massive amount of recoil in return. We see a second Dark Void from that Smeargle on the off chance that either of those Pokemon decided to wake up. Yeah, it's a very safe turn for Ian there, obviously. Both of them still asleep. The Moody Boost not really being too much of a problem now. It's actually done its work, which is nice. Uh, we do see the Kangaskhan doing huge damage to the Gardevoir there. I mean, that's a lot from a single double edge. It's going to be a real problem knowing how much damage it can do. And that might be the reason we don't see as much Gardevoir now. They're just scared of the amount of damage Kangaskhan can do. Ashton really needs some Pokemon to start waking up. He does have the Tailwind up, but he's not able to use it because his Pokemon are just napping. Yes, if Gardevoir wakes up this turn, we could see, you know, a little bit of change here. Maybe the Ash, or maybe Ashen to get some momentum back. We actually see a haze from that Crobat. So all stat changes were eliminated. That Smeargle is no longer evasive at all. Gardevoir wakes up right after that Crobat gets that Hyper Voice and is able to knock out the Smeargle and a Kangaskhan. What an amazingly lucky turn for Ashton there. Yeah, beautiful turn for Ashton. And he does get the wake up on the last turn of Tailwind, which he really needed. Obviously eliminates all of those moody changes, so he's guaranteed to hit with that Hyper Voice. And then the Gardevoir actually wakes up and gets the knockout. Ian just probably not assuming that it was going to wake up, banking on another turn of sleep. Doesn't throw a Sucker Punch the way of the Gardevoir, so it does get to Hyper Voice for free. And now he puts Ian's back up against the wall a little bit. He went through those few turns, lucky to get the short sleeps, of course. But now it's a 4-2 Pokemon advantage in Ashton's favor. And he should feel pretty good going into the back end of this game, of course. We don't know what they are, which restricted he's bought, but he's forced the weather out from Ian already. Showing the Groudon, being forced to show your hand, means if he's got Kyogre, he should be able to bring it in nice and safe. And of course, Crobat's still on the field, so Xerneas, it might be looking to try and Geomancy, but Haze is around, so it's going to be really tough. And probably not something Ian wants to do here. Yeah, and a nice little bonus for Ashton as well is with Xerneas returning to the field, it brings back its Fairy Aura ability as well. And Gardevoir can kind of punish that because not only will fa Fairy Aura boost Xerneas' attacks, but it'll boost Gardevoir's attacks as well. Yeah, Gardevoir really double dip in there on the boost. It gets the Fairy Aura boost, then it gets the boost from Pixelate, and of course the same type of attack bonus. So huge amounts of damage if that Gardevoir gets to attack, which likely it's going to be able to do now. We see the Tailwind come out from Crobat. Yeah, Tailwind from Crobat, ensuring that Gardevoir will be able to attack at least once more prior to it getting knocked out. Uh, Xerneas deciding to go for a Geomancy. Groudon going for a Fire Punch into the Crobat, just barely missing that knockout, meaning Crobat could, is free to haze again next turn. Yeah, I think Ian was really banking on the Fire Punch, knocking out the Crobat. But we do see people train these Crobats to be a, a little bulkier than you'd expect. I mean, it's usually known as a very fast and frail Pokemon, but not getting the knockout on that Crobat is a real problem trying to, you know, get the Geomancy up, it's just not worth it when Haze is available. And Ashton's already shown this trump card, so very bold of Ian to assume he's going to get the Fire Punch knockout there. He doesn't get it, and I think, you know, with the Pixelate, Fairy Aura, and the same type of attack bonus coming off 
uh, a big hyper voice, I feel like Gardevoir might just be able to push through or at least significantly weaken this pair to a point where whatever Ashton has in the back, he's going to be able to tidy it up. There's no priority on Ian's side of the field, so even though he only needs to do a tiny, tiny bit of damage to both of these Pokemon, he's still going to have to wait his turn. Yes, and one thing that we do have to keep in mind here is that, you know, while Xerneas is going to be forced to move after that Gardevoir, it certainly is not out. It it is a very powerful po Pokemon, and we've really seen it turn things and games around completely. So even though it lost that Moody bo or that excuse me Geomancy boost, it will still move first because of how the speed was determined at the beginning of the turn and do that little damage needed to pick up the double knockout on Crobat and Gardevoir. Yeah, it's good that he gets rid of the haze. And Ian oh. capitalizing on this turn with a beautiful substitute, knowing as well, obviously the haze wasn't going to take effect till next turn, so. Ashton wasn't able to keep the Gardevoir safe, he just needed to keep it safe at one more turn, maybe fishing for the double protect, and we do see Ian reveal substitute on that Groudon, so even though the Kyogre hits the field, we are going to see the sunlight come out, so maybe not the way Ashton wanted it, I feel like Ashton might have wanted the rain to come out instead. We are going to see, of course, the Groudon Primal revert second, and it's going to be really tough here for Ashton. They've both got their primal pairings out, and that substitute, I think, has just completely swung the game back in Ian's favor, while the momentum was definitely on Ashton's side. That turn where he gets the double knockout and sets up the sub just puts things so much in Ian's court. The ball is definitely bouncing there right now. Yeah, and one thing I find very interesting is when players run double primal, you'll usually see the Kyogre run a slightly slower speed than the Groudon, so if you are forced to send both of them out on the field at the same time prior to their primal reversion, Rain will be the dominant weather. Uh, Groudon is one of those Pokemon where while it's nice that it can do fire type attacks that are boosted by the sun, it doesn't need the sun in order to function. Kyogre, on the other hand, it can only ice beam, maybe thunder if it's lucky. Um, not having that rain up really significantly drops the amount of damage it can deal. So Ashton definitely put in a less than ideal situation here. We're just going to have to see how he decides to respond to it. Uh, Groudon on the inside of the field, picking this time to protect this turn, going to preserve that substitute at least once more. Ice Beam, therefore, unable to break it. Crespus Blades from that Groudon missing the Xerneas, allowing for it to go for a Moonblast into the Kyogre. Again, it did lose its Geomancy boost, so it's not going to be that powerful, but not being able to destroy the Sun, uh, excuse me, destroy the substitute that turn, uh, burned a turn of Tailwind for Ashton. Yeah, Ashton's kind of running out of time now. I feel he's on a bit of a clock to capitalize on this. He's not going to be able to do much uh, and here we go he's actually going to be able to attack into that substitute this turn yes yeah, Groudon going for a second protect but it fails ice beam successfully breaks the substitute this time comes all down to this precipice blades will it connect with both pokemon how much damage will it do will it be enough to knock out that Groudon? and it is Groudon is knocked out xerneas not taking as much damage but it is now a xerneas versus both a kyogre and Groudon. and even though kyogre's damage output is has significantly been weakened and tailwind has run out you know, Groudon is still sitting there at full health. It has those very powerful fire-type attacks uh, boosted by the sunlight. I think it's definitely a threat that Xerneas should watch out for. We see Kyogre going for another Ice Beam here. Another Moonblast from that Xerneas, this time connecting with Groudon, hoping to do a little bit of chip damage onto it. And a Fire Punch from Groudon connecting with that Xerneas. I believe this should be enough to end Game 1 and send us right into Game 2. Ashton taking the win. What a fantastic ending to that game. I was saying, Ian picks up the momentum, Ashton doesn't let that bother him, and he gets the double primals in under the tailwind and just manages to put consistent pressure on. Really fantastic play. The substitute looked like it could have saved Ian, and knowing that the ice beam breaks the substitute is really good. In a way, that is better to have the Kyogre go first, although he didn't get the weather he wanted, as you were saying. I feel like having the Kyogre be able to Ice Beam the Substitute away and then follow up with the Precipice Blades really worked for Ashton. So swings and roundabouts, one thing not so good. The other thing worked out a lot better. So very good game from Ashton. It looked like Ian had it wrapped up, and I think he maybe just got a little bit placent in that knowledge. 
very, very smart play from Ashton. I'm going to see if you know he can carry that on coming into game two and three. Yeah, and I know I said in the last game that, you know, trainers, if they're running double primals, might want to run the Kyogre slower. I can't help but wonder if Ashton, you know, ran this matchup maybe against the substitute Groudon prior to coming here to Florida yesterday, realized that he needed a way to deal with substitute Groudon and thought, well, why don't I just do the thing that people don't expect, make my Kyogre faster, ensure that I keep sunlight up, and then just rely on that Ice Beam to break any substitutes and allow my Groudon to deal the damage I need it to deal. Yeah, we also have to consider as well, I know we're sort of harping on about this point, but Ashton's team does have Trick Room on it in that Gardevoir, so although the Kyogre is our higher speed stat, when Trick Room is in play, if he does the same kind of play, he then brings them in, then of course the Kyogre gets the range. So there's so many options in the way he can run this team. We saw him go with the Tailwind last time. This, maybe this time he's going to bring the Trick Room, or maybe it's just there to reverse other Trick Rooms. Yeah, it's such a versatile team. I gotta, you know, give it to Ashton. He's so good at running very unique Pokemon and making them do exactly the what he needs them to do and he's able to just make this team work for so many different situations i'm very excited to see how ian's going to respond to this game maybe we'll see that gengar whimsicott combo that he certainly has yeah i think there's definitely other options in ian's team he puts a lot of eggs in the smeagol basket as we see i mean smeagol zernius is his lead it's kind of his thing almost his brand if you will but i like the way he plays it he got a lot more out of the smeagol this game i think and that definitely helped him We'll see if he sticks with it this game, but we see Ashton sticking with what worked for him, so maybe Ian's going to do the same. Yeah, Crobat Gardevoir from Ashton, Kangaskhan Smeargle from Ian, so we will see a little bit of a mix-up, only this time it's the Kangaskhan that's going to help Smeargle, you know, draw its pretty sleek pictures across the field. Yeah, we do see, of course, Gardevoir uh, getting the trace ability, doesn't get any information out of this one, so not so good, but I feel like uh, Ashton's going to play pretty much the similar game here of course the fake outs in the way for him but he's still allowed to do a lot of what he wants fake outs not going to slow down crowbat so he's likely going to get up the tailwind probably just going to keep gardevoir safe so it doesn't get hit by those potential dark voids and crowbat has the lumberry so very safe turn a very good position if you're crowbat right now yeah we do know that crowbat has the lumberry so i would be curious to see if ian you know might look at the field right now and think well i know my smeargle can't really do much until uh, Crobat is gone, or that Lumberry has already been consumed. Maybe I'll take Smeargle back, send it out later, once Ashton does not have any more responses uh, to my Dark Void, and, you know, have it uh, be helpful for me late game. We're not going to see that. Kangaskhan instead Mega Evolving immediately, Gardevoir Mega Evolving afterwards, which means Ian did not switch out any Pokemon this turn at all. I'm really curious to see what Smeargle is going to do now, uh, given the fact that a Dark Void seems very unlikely. Gardevoir once again going for that Protect turn one, Crobat once again using Tailwind. Kangaskhan did not fake out this time, so it's possible Kangaskhan has decided to power up punch um to get that attack bonus uh it looks like it targeted that crowbat so again not going to do a lot of damage but you know kangaskhan has really set itself up for success right now and especially if we see smeargle get another lucky boost or possibly survive that hyper voice again um going into turn two and putting both these pokemon to sleep kangaskhan will be in a lovely position to just start using double edge or return or really any attack of its choice to deal a lot of damage to these pokemon here comes that moody boost it gets a defense boost and a accuracy drop so really not what ian was hoping for no not good boost for ian but pretty good boost i guess for ashton having the accuracy go down means even though he's likely going to want to throw a dark void it's going to be even harder to hit both the pokemon on the field i feel like ian though He's in a really good position because both of the Pokemon he has on the field are quite threatening towards Ashton. He needs to get rid of the Smeagol so he doesn't get dark voided. And with the boost, he's going to just throw the Sucker Punch right at the Gardevoir. Oh, Gardevoir and the knockout. hanging on by 8 HP Super Fang from that Crobat connecting with the Kangaskhan. Gardevoir not using Hyper Voice this time around, instead using Psychic to guarantee... No, it misses the knockout on Kangaskhan by just a little bit of HP. That Dark Void from that Smeargle does happen. Crobat goes to sleep. The big question is, what does Gardevoir do here? It is put to sleep as well. What a incredible turn. Will Moody make this turn even better? It gets the evasiveness boost. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Would you like a break? I feel like you'd like a little break there. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we're going to keep this ball rolling. No, anyway. What a turn. I mean, we see Kangaskhan using its really big offensive pressure with that plus two after the power-up punch to throw that sucker punch towards Gardevoir. 
doesn't get the knockout, leaves it with a fraction of health, and then Ashton decides the one thing I want to get rid of is that Kangaskhan, decides that maybe Dark Void could miss, obviously, after that drop in the first turn, so he kind of puts all his eggs in the knocking out Kangaskhan basket and just misses the knockout, so absolutely awful for him. Now both his Pokemon are asleep, and Ashton's kind of free to just start, uh, Ian's quite free to just start attacking. Taking knockouts left and right. Yeah, and that's exactly what we see here. Kangaskhan using that double edge to knock out Crobat. Unfortunately, it does take recoil damage from that as well. So it is knocked out. But Smeargle still on the field, still using Dark Void, still, you know, using that Moody ability to get some boost. It gets an accuracy boost. So it is now at plus one accuracy, minus one speed, and plus two evasiveness if I've done my uh, Smeargle Moody calcs correctly. <laughs> you have, and that accuracy boost making up for obviously the accuracy drop it got in turn one now makes Smeagol even more of a threat before it wasn't so much of a threat but now it's although it is a bit slower it's still in a really good position here it's likely going to be hitting dark voids so you just don't want to risk actually getting hit by them and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Ashton because hey the good thing about Smeagol here is it draws a lot of attention to itself it can even draw the attention away with follow me and if that's what you want it to be knocked out, then you're knocking out a non-restricted, non-mega Pokemon while a restricted or a mega Pokemon is tearing through your team. We just saw Kangaskhan taking a nice knockout, and we now have the Xerneas that he's probably going to keep safe and try and set up the Geomancy, especially now the threat of Haze is gone from the field. Yeah, this is really Xerneas' time to shine, I think. Last game, you know, that Haze really threw a wrench in its plans, but now, you know, he knows Ashton probably doesn't have another answer to that Geomancy, and with Gardevoir at such full health and Groudon, you know, unable to target that Xerneas, uh, maybe next turn if it's lucky, depending on the accuracy uh, of that Fire Punch or Crespus Blades or whatever other attack it chooses to throw out right now. Um, Smeargle, though, not using Follow Me, instead going for a Wide Guard. So if Groudon used Crespus Blades here, that could be bad news. Instead, we see that Fire Punch. It does connect with Smeargle, and it misses that knockout just barely. I believe Smeargle took a defense boost earlier on in the game, and that clearly, uh, you know, allowed it to survive this attack allowed Xerneas to get that Geomancy up for free. The last remaining question is, you know, I believe this Gardevoir hasn't uh, tried to wake up yet. No, it has not. And if it does wake up, what does it go for if it gets it? Yeah, it, it does, does wake, wake up, up and, and it, it trick rooms. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that is just nuts. So, you know, just as Tailwind runs out, just as Smeargle gets a speed boost, Woo! the trick room allowing Groudon to move first, allowing Groudon to target that Xerneas or that Smeargle before they can even attack, that was just incredible. Everything came together wow. for Ashton. All the planets aligned. The Tailwind peters out. Smeargle gets the speed boost with its Moody. And his Gardevoir wakes up in Trick Rooms. So now he's in a really fantastic position. Likely his Pokemon on the field. We saw obviously the Groudon slower than the Kyogre. It's likely going to be just a slow Groudon. Probably going to be moving first. Then followed by the Gardevoir. Because both of the Pokemon on Ashton are inside the field have had their speed raised and now they're being punished for it by the trick room. We see Groudon start the turn with the Fire Punch. Yes, Fire Punch into that Xerneas to deal some damage, but Gardevoir misses the Psychic on Smeargle. Here comes the Dark Void. At least one thing's going asleep because we did see the animation. The question is, who's it going to be? We know the Groudon goes asleep. What about that Gardevoir? It goes to sleep as well. So despite the speed control in Ashton's favor, Xerneas is now free to use that Dazzling Gleam to knock out that Gardevoir to deal some massive damage to Groudon and to continue doing that at least for one more turn. Yeah, and we see that obviously Ashton thinks he's going to get the knockout with the Psychic, but Moody comes through again. Now the evasiveness has fallen, now it's back to normal, but before it was boosted, and that's how Psychic managed to miss. We see that Moody does bring you back into games, the momentum just swinging every single turn this game. Maybe if he doubled in to that Smiggle, he'd have been able to guarantee the knockout and not be asleep. But he does get the Kyogre in, and I feel Kyogre has to be a little bit careful what it does here. The temptation, I believe, on Ashton's side of the field would be to just throw out maybe a Water Spout, maybe an Origin Pulse. But he does have to be careful, of course. Ian bringing that Wide Guard on the Smeagol that we saw earlier really limits his options and means that Ashton can only pick off one thing at a time while he's trying to capitalize on this Trick Room being up. And obviously the boosts on Smeagol meaning it's going to be going late in the turn. 
Yeah, and not only that, the boost on Xerneas means if this Kyogre, I believe it's very specially oriented, you know, it's not really going to be able to deal a lot of damage to Xerneas. Yeah, I think he really needs... The best way to get that Xerneas gone is to use the Groudon, but Groudon, of course, going to sleep on the last turn. It's not going to be able to wake up this turn. It's definitely the first turn of sleep. So I think Ashton just has to be very careful in how he plays with this Kyogre. He does want to get rid of the Smeagol, so there's no more threat of wide guard. But the longer you sit there just attacking Smeagol, the more damage Xerneas can do. Yeah, so Smeargle here switching out, Groudon coming in in its place. So, uh, you know, great play by Ian here. I think Kyogre using a water type attack was probably its best option. So this very defensive uh, switch will allow him to stop any water type attacks. Uh, We'll have to see if Ashton was able to call this. You know, an Ice Beam wouldn't really deal a lot of damage to that Xerneas, but I think at this point, you know, every turn counts. Um, we need Groudon to just, you know, keep ticking away turns to try and wake up. We know it at least has a shot of doing it next turn. Ice Beam does uh, come out from that Kyogre, and it actually targets the Groudon slot, so a great play by Ashton. Predicting that switch, managing to capitalize on it a little bit, and a Dazzling Gleam from Xerneas will finish the turn. Yeah, it just puts out some good damage with that Dazzling Gleam. The Ice Beam, I think, is the safest play there from Ashton. I know. I think Ian was hoping he'd be a little bit greedy and just maybe throw out the Water Spout, which we've seen it carries, or maybe just an uh, Origin Pulse or Skull, depending on what else it's bringing. Ashton doesn't fall for the trap, though. The fact that Wide Guard was there to threaten him, I think, forced him, actually, to use Ice Beam. A very smart turn just to go for the safe play, and he gets really significant damage down on the Groudon. He's going to start this turn by protecting, maybe giving a little more time for Ashton's Groudon to wake up. Yeah, unfortunately, we do not see the Groudon wake up this turn. Kyogre going for a second Ice Beam, this time targeting that Xerneas, which will be the only Pokemon on Ian's side of the field to attack this turn. It chooses Moonblast, it targets that Groudon. Will it be enough for the knockout? And it is. Uh, poor Kyogre is left on the field as Ashton's last Pokemon, and with that sunlight up, it's just in ensuring that it won't deal the damage Ashton needs, and Ian will take game two of this series. Yeah, this game was absolutely insane. The way the momentum just bounced back and forth. I think it's unfortunate that, obviously, Ashton's now stuck with just the Ice Beam, not going to be able to get through those teams, the remaining two on Ian's side of the field. But what a game. Both what a players game indeed. playing very smart. And I think there's just a couple of key turns in there that Ashton really could have capitalized on, but Smeagol did Smeagol things. And that, I definitely think, was what helped Ian get through this game. Yeah, Ian was really able to capitalize on the opportunities that Smeargle opened up for him in this game. So the big question is, um, you know, how does Ashton respond? He thought he had a great counter for Smeargle. Unfortunately, though, Ian sort of outsmarted him this game. Will we see something else from Ashton into game three to try and stop that Smeargle from just, you know, having a great time? I think he has to stop two things. Here. He has to stop the Smeargle and he has to stop the Xerneas as well. We've had every game that Ian gets like a nice safe Geomancy up on the Xerneas, that's the way he's able to win the game. He keeps it safe with the Smeagol, with the Kangaskhan, and then brings in Groudon to give it an offensive friend. So that's the way he does it, and the fact that Ashton lost his Crobat, which has been his best answer to this Geomancy so far with the Haze, I think when he lost that, it was going to be really hard for him to win the game. Obviously bringing it close with that Trick Room turn, fantastic play to have that on your Gardevoir and use it perfectly. It just wasn't enough, especially with the threat of Dark Void still there. Ian sticking with Blast Games lead, going again for that Kangaskhan and Smeargle. And Ashton, you know, staying true to what he knows best. Gardevoir and Crobat coming back out once on the field. I think he's used this lead every single time in this Top Cut series. Uh, Gardevoir, though, tracing the Moody. I doubt he's not going to Mega Evolve, but who knows? Maybe he'll try and roll the dice. Yeah, it could be interesting to see that one play out. If Gardevoir picks up all kinds of goodies, then... It could be an interesting game, but likely it's just going to want to go Mega Evolve and get the Pixelate ability. I'm interested to see if Ian goes for exactly the same play now. We did see him go for the Power Up Punch, and I really liked that play, so I think it would be wise of him to go for it again, because then it drew some of the pressure away from the Smeagol, and he had to focus on the Kangaskhan. I don't really see a way Ashton has an answer to this, though. I mean, the only thing he could do is he's shown this lead to Ian twice now, so what he could do is call that bluff and then throw out an attack, hope he doesn't get hit by the Dark Void, but just get some damage down. Yeah, I think it's all going to come down to how fast is this Gardevoir. If Gardevoir is able to naturally outspeed the Smeargle on the field, you know, maybe we'll see it attempt to get a knockout if you're right, if he's trying to outsmart Ian, if Ian doesn't go for a 
power up punch instead fake out into the Gardevoir. We didn't even see it protect, nevertheless Mega Evolve. So it looks like Ashton is trying to get a little bit of Moody in his favor. Unfortunately though, uh, Crobat does get that Tailwind up. Smeargle is going to be able to Dark Void this turn. We see that animation. If Gardevoir dodges here, it could be huge depending on what Moody decides to give it. Crobat goes to sleep, so we know the Lumberry will immediately wake it up. Again, it's all coming down to this Gardevoir, and unfortunately, it decides that it is indeed nap time. Yeah, what well, I like that. We do, obviously, it does get a turn of sleep, and we are going to see some very fun Moody boosts here. Accuracy up though, defense down. I don't think that was what Ashton wanted. On Ian's side of the field, accuracy up and uh, evasiveness down. So I think Smeargle definitely benefiting from that accuracy boost way more than Gardevoir can. Yeah, that's going to be really helpful for it. And the fact it's awake means it can capitalize as well. Ian calling the bluff absolutely beautifully at the beginning of the turn, saying Ashton's protected it turn one both games. He's not going to protect it again this turn. So you know what, I'm just going to throw a fake out there doesn't get it before it Mega Evolves, so it does a really large amount of damage, and now it might just be able to go really aggressive. Yeah, Super Fang from Crobat missing, unfortunately. Gardevoir also remaining asleep. We're going to see a second power-up punch. Gets the crit on the first hit from Kangaskhan, boosting its attacks. Two stages, a great play from Ian here to capitalize on the turn of sleep that Gardevoir had there, thanks to that Dark Void. Smeargle again going for a Dark Void. We know that Gardevoir is already asleep, so seeing this animation, I believe, confirms that Crobat will be put to sleep this turn as well. Yeah, very smart play from Ian. Just get everything asleep and start knocking it out. Obviously getting the power-up punch means that Kangaskhan's going to be a real threat. And poor Smeargle, or maybe I should say Great Smeargle, it gets that evasiveness boost and it gets a, I believe, accuracy drop, but it did have the accuracy boosted, so I think it still comes out ahead. Yeah, it's just the reverse of what we got on turn one, actually. So accuracy now only up by one stage, and evasiveness also up one stage. So actually, it's it's doing all right for itself. It it's, it's doing pretty good. Crobat remaining asleep this turn. Gardevoir, though, waking up. That Hyper Voice connects with both the Smeargle and the Kangaskhan. It misses the knockout once again on Smeargle. Kangaskhan free to attack that Crobat with an immensely powerful double edge, taking it out with just one hit. We'll have to see how much recoil damage this does to that Kangaskhan. It definitely puts it in the red. Smeargle going for another Dark Void, and it does connect. Yeah, Ian playing safe, knowing that it might be time for Gardevoir to wake up, and he gets the Dark Void back down. So Ashton really can't capitalize on the fact it woke up the next turn. We do get the Moody Boost uh... with the accuracy going up, and the special attack going down. So that accuracy has been boosted twice and is way, way up there. It's pretty much going to be impossible for him to miss those Dark Voids now. So I think this could just be the way for him to get through this game now. If Ian can just keep playing that way, it's going to be very hard for Ashton, unless there's a real trump card in the back and he is going to bring the Groudon in, and I'm not sure if that's going to be the answer. I'm not sure at all. We do know that Groudon is fairly slow. Even with Tailwind still up, I doubt it's going to outspeed that Smeargle. We'll have to see. Um, we do know the evasiveness, evasiveness is also up, so if Groudon is able to attack, it might not even connect. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Ian just needs to burn out the last turn of Tailwind, really, and he's done it really well so far by things being asleep. You can't capitalize on your Tailwind turns if things are snoozing. So Ian just needs to get through to the end of it, and that Smeargle is going to be able to run rampant. He also, even if Tailwind runs out, he's going to be in a really good position to knock out Gardevoir, Probably going to be able to catch it with a sucker punch now because of that power up punch coming good. So, even if it does wake up, it's going to be hard for it to actually do any significant damage. Yeah, Smeargle going for follow me, but Groudon calling that play, going for the eruption. It connects with both Smeargle and Kangaskhan, picking up that double knockout. An amazing play by Ashton there. Not only him, but. Not only buying him one turn to have Gardevoir, you know, maybe wake up the next turn, but getting that double knockout, I think he really needed to keep him in the game. Yeah, he uses that last turn of Tailwind so well. And that's the big thing when people set up Tailwind. Not every player manages to use it to its maximum ability. The final turn, though, Ian doesn't have anything to stop that ground on. Just going for a huge eruption. He does pick up the double knockout there. Shows a little bit of its moveset. Maybe Ian's not ready for that. But really, really good momentum swing here for Ashton. Even closer to that Gardevoir waking up for him, which could be really beneficial. And it'd be interesting to see as well, we haven't quite seen the Groudon match up against the Groudon on Ashton's side of the field. So we should see how they match up. And if Ashton's remaining Pokemon is Kyogre, might be the thing to bring in and seal up this match by bringing the rain and neutralizing what that Groudon can do a little bit. 
Yeah, I'm very excited to see how these turns play out. We do not see a switch from Ashton yet. Crespus Blades from that Groudon on Ian's side of the field, connecting with both Pokemon, knocking out that Gardevoir, leaving Groudon with just a sliver of health. Um, Xerneas is going to use this opportunity to set up that Geomancy, making it once again a very strong force to contend with. I think it's all going to come down to what move this Groudon uses and how much damage it's going to do. I don't think Ashton is out of the battle quite yet. But, you know, it's certainly not looking that great. You know, having such a powerful Xerneas, knowing that it's going to move first, and knowing that you've lost all of your speed control. But unfortunate for Ashton, Precipice Blade misses that Groudon. It's not going to deal nearly enough damage to that Xerneas, and it's really not looking good for him right now. Yeah, we do see as well. We get a little insight here, and maybe too little too late, on how this Xerneas is trained. It does get the Geomancy to be able to be offensive and defensive on the special side of things, and obviously get that speed. But the way it takes those precipice blades would imply you know, it also moved after the ground on on uh, inside of the field so no speed investment on there it's just you know it's just trying to be bulky and tank here it's like oh Zernius, let's go <laughs> i love the way that he's done something different and it looks like it's paying dividends because he's able to just eat up these precipice blades like their breakfast and just keep on going setting himself up and i think he's in a really good position to push himself through especially the fact that we saw his ground on move before Ashton's ground on. Yes, we'll have to see. Does Ashton have one last trick up his sleeve to save him in this situation? Once again, it's definitely coming down to the wire. Both of these trainers are taking every last second they can use to try and make this battle last that much longer. Xerneas protecting this turn, not going to take any damage. Groudon uh, protecting as well. So it looks like Ian is trying to see what Ashton's going to do here, <laughs> possibly even trying to stall out his own Groudon's protect, leaving Kyogre to use uh, Thunder actually to target that Xerneas. Yeah, even if it does hit, it's not going to do that much damage because of the special defense boost that came along with that Geomancy. Just a nice bit of scouting. Ian just doesn't want to get caught short by anything. Perhaps using the protects to indicate if there's a speed tie or if he's just consistently faster than Ashton's Pokemon. Knowing that means he can plan out these final couple of moves really smartly. Yes, I'm very excited to see, you know, I don't think Ashton's out of the running yet. It's all going to come down to possibly this turn, possibly next turn. We'll have to see how these trainers play. Moonblast from that Xerneas is the first move we see. It connects with the Groudon. It picks up that knockout, possibly due to a critical hit. Uh, Groudon is down, leaving Kyogre as the last Pokemon on Ashton's side of the field, using that Scald to knock out the Groudon. So here it is, Xerneas versus Kyogre, the last two Pokemon on these trainers' side of the field for, you know, the, the opportunity to move on into the finals of this regional championship. It is so close right now, I have no idea what to expect. Yeah, I love that they've got down to this one-on-one. -on -one. We do see a huge attack coming out from the Xerneas, and we do see Thunder connecting with the Xerneas, probably looking to fish for that full paralysis chance. Uh, that's what he needs. He doesn't get it, unfortunately, and Xerneas just able to push through that Geomancy just too strong in the end yeah. to really handle it. Yeah, so very well played by both Ashton and Ian. You know, it's really great when these top cut matches get so close like this because, you know, both these trainers are incredibly good at what they do. They know their teams. They know their matchups. They know how to play. And even when Ashton was, you know, looking at a really bad spot towards the end of the game, he knew that, well, if I somehow get this uh, paralysis on Xerneas, that means my Kyogre will move first, and then I can just start fishing for critical hits. Yeah, I You know, love... it's very unlikely, but I can still do it. Yeah, I love that he looks for that out and a number of players wouldn't do that they just try and do damage and then, oh have I got a crit but no very smart of Ashton to look for the full paralysis chance with thunder of course he's going to hit because the rain is up it's just smart play around unfortunately he doesn't get it and we see Ian's Geomancy Xerneas what wins him games I mean that game we saw a lot of pressure come out from Smeagol and of course we saw Xerneas do really well after he got the Geomancy up he learned game one I need to get rid of Crobat then I can win with Xerneas game two and three he went and did it so fantastic play by Ian and he's a very deserving finalist. Ashton's ride will finish, though, at the Elite Four this week. Yeah, and that's certainly something to go out and celebrate. So congratulations to Ashton. Congratulations to Ian. We'll be seeing you in a little bit. But first, I believe we're going to watch uh, Wolf Click and Will yeah. uh, duke it out. We're going to see uh, Wolf Click versus Will Collins. Florida's last hope. Uh, will will be playing the reigning world champion. So it should be an interesting one. 
and a rematch from 2015's Ooh, top four. That'll be good. So it should be an interesting one. Maybe we'll get a little bit spicy. All right. Well, stay tuned, everybody. We will be right back.